In this video, I'm going to be talking about Kruxar Wallace test. So, the Kruxar Wallace test is a non parametric test which uh, basically is going to test whether a couple of populations or a couple of samples have the same population distribution. So, I'll start off by stating what the hypothesis H0 is. So, uh, let me just go down here. So, H0 is saying that all the, the populations uh, are distributed are distributed the same way it can be uh, so it's, it's quite important that I say that because uh, it's the, the keyword distribution is really important because we are talking about statistics so it doesn't really make sense to say the populations are the same uh, uh, because we you know which way and the alternative hypothesis is saying at least one of the populations is different populations is distributed differently okay so I need to make sure I say at least because it's possible that in this case uh, this this population is exactly the same as this one but it's different to day shift okay so that's that's what we're saying so at least one we don't know which one it is but at least one of them is different uh, if you want to check which one you had to do a man Whitney you test but we're not touching on that one in this this video so anyway, so in this particular question, there are a set of workers, right? The number of hours, and it's recorded the number of hours that you work. So in a day shift, there's 52, 57, 53. In an alternative shift, there's this kind of thing. And in a night shift, there's, there's this kind of hours. So so the first thing that we're going to do is, we, is that we're going to rank them. Okay, so I'm going to choose the first, first column. So you go equals rank, and then the, the, the number that you're after and the reference so the reference is basically what you're referring that number against so I'm referring that number against all these numbers so I'm sorting against all those numbers and then you have to say one just to, just to make sure it it's ascending because otherwise zero means it's it ranks it in descending order which is not useful in this particular case so do that but uh, one more thing I should have mentioned is that you need to make sure you lock lock your rep, uh, the reference bit in so Put dollar signs against uh, references so in my case a and the c uh, a a the two the c and the five sorry okay so lock in everything and now we're going to move it across and then move it across now actually i'll just i'll just show you what what would have happened if i didn't lock it uh, in case you're not familiar with this whole locking terminology so if i had moved it down now and i look at this reference over here See how this the, it's referring against this blank line, so the the top line is gone now. So it doesn't matter that it's referring against blank lines, but it matters that the the top line hasn't been referred properly. Okay, so that's why we that's why we uh, lock it in. Okay, so let me just move that back. So okay, so the the now the reference is locked in. Okay, all right. Now let's move on. Now there are two numbers that are exactly the same. So there's 41 hours over here and 41 hours over here. So I get the rank two twice, okay. So the small, the second smallest number appears twice. So I get two two. Now, whenever you see this kind of behavior, what you need to do is you need to average out the ranks. So if it wasn't two and two, it would have been two and three. So average those no two numbers out, you you would get two point five. Now suppose I had three forty ones. If I had three forty ones, I would have had two two and two again. So in that particular case, uh, if I didn't have equal numbers, I would have had two, three, and four. When you average two, three, and four, you get three. Okay, so you need to really understand how to average them. So it's not always just a matter of putting 0.5 against it. It depends on the number of uh, equal things that I have. And you just need to average what it would have been otherwise. Okay, so that's why I said two, two and three would have turned into 2.5. Okay, now get rid of these uh, not this these things not applicable values that you have okay so i'm going to get rid of them and then the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to sum up my ranks go e so e go equals sum so sum up your ranks sorry this should be sum of okay so so sum up all those and then move it across Okay, and then we're gonna get, uh, okay, this, there's actually two ways of doing this. One is to get the average rank, okay? And the other one is to look at the sum of the ranks. So looking, what, we, what we're what after is to get this case statistic. So if you look up Crookside Wallace test in Wikipedia, 
you end up getting this statistic go here. Okay, so this this is, I'm looking at the second line, and the way that they done it, the statistic goes 12 divided by n. Now n over here is the total number of observations. Okay, not just for each category, and then they're talking about n times the average rank. Okay, for each category, average rank for each category. So you can do it that way, or you can go. Um, the sum of the ranks divided sum of the ranks squared divided by n okay so it's up to you which way you do it but um, so I'm, I'm personally going to do sum of the ranks divided by n it, it turns out to be exactly the same thing so don't don't stress about it it's, um, it's just a mathematical mathematical uh, trick I guess okay so basically we have we had this bit um, now so as far as the statistic k goes, th which is what we're really after, uh, the for using this formula over here, that we the second in the second line, I will end up saying this is equal to twelve divided by use brackets. Now n in this case is there are ten total observations, so I'm going to go time, divided by ten times eleven. And if you're wondering where this twelve came from, it is just a constant. Okay, so that's fixed. You can't really do much about it. And then you go. Uh, it's it's going to be so sum of, so the sum of the ranks squared. So it's going to be um, actually I should I should have done that step first. So let me let me just copy this to somewhere else for now. Paste it. Okay. And then this one I I need one last thing before I before I start uh, doing this. And that's to go equals sum the ranks square it square it and then I'm going to divide by the count okay so I need I need that particular statistic and I'm going to move this across okay and that's and that comes back to what I'm doing over here okay so I'm not I'm personally not doing the average rank squared I'm doing the sum of the ranks squared and then I'm going to divide it by n okay and then I want you to sum up these final numbers to get to satisfy this summation sign okay all right so that's that's part of it so now coming back to here my k statistic I will say is equal to is equal to this thing times this the sum that I finally calculated okay minus three times so if I come back to this is three times n plus one so three times eleven and there you go this is your final k value the k value that you're really after so we still haven't finished yet we need to test is this significantly different uh, is, it, is this over your or in your rejection region I should say so to get your rejection region we're going to go uh, rejection region or, or rather critical critical value And that's going to be equal to chi inverse so th that's the function that you need and the number uh, so chi inverse so is the number that they're talking about over here is your alpha value or your p-value that that you go consider uh, significant after so in this case I'm going to choose 0 0.01 the degrees of freedom the degrees of freedom is simply the number of categories minus one so in this case it's going to be two close brackets and then you get that so under under the okay, so according at at a significance level of 0 0.01, I will not reject H0. So the populations are distributed the same way. Okay, so in this particular case, but let's let's just check the what the p-value is as well. Okay, so that's a critical value method which I particularly don't actually like. So so chi dist. So chi dist this time, you're going to choose the k-value because we need to check the p-value of that, and the degrees of freedom is again two. Okay, so it's 0 0.03. Okay, so if my alpha value was 0 0.05, I would have ended up rejecting H0. Okay, so there you go. So, it, so this, this is a critical value at 0 0.01. So I'll change this to 0 0.05 to keep everything consistent. So yeah, so it's pretty close to the K value. So there you go. Um, so if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. But again, keep in mind this, this is a known parametric test. That, that's why we actually dealt with the ranks okay so this is all the ranks instead of the actual numbers so we remember it didn't matter what the actual numbers were at all so that that's why this is a non-parametric test 
Um, if you have any questions, let, let me know. But uh, thanks for watching.